Welcome to ESL Best Practices. If you'd like to access the bit.ly, please go to bit.ly forward slash best practice ELs. Hello and welcome. My name is Kristen Adams and I'm a staff development facilitator at the Carbon Lehigh Intermediate Unit. If you'd like to contact me or if there's anything we can do at the IU to assist you, please feel free to email me at adamc at cliu.org. We're going to get started with today about ELS and some of our best practices. But to get started, let's take a look at some of the acronyms that you might see when you're working with an L. EL or L or ELS refer to English learner. ESL, English as a second language, is used to describe a certified teacher of ELS. Also, ESL might be used. When we're talking about the English language development program or the instructional content used by ESL teachers, we refer to the program as ELD. The ELP is the English language proficiency. This is based on a student's WIDA access level. The WIDA test is administered every year in the four domains of reading, writing, listening, and speaking. Who are else? This is just a little background knowledge. If you already work with else, these are things you already know. But if you're joining us, I hope this sets the stage for you. Els are students whose primary language is anything other than English. They may be able to speak proficient English. They may or may not be in an ELD program. They may not be literate in a primary language, speak several languages, or have what we call interrupted or limited schooling. They may be born in the United States or in other countries. Not all ESL students or Els are in an ELD program. Some might have been exited, some might be on a monitor status, or some may not have met the criteria to enter the program. Another reason is parents have the option to decline the program for their child. When it comes to our ESL students, the expectation is high for them. Els are expected to learn English and content at the same time. This is an extremely heavy lift for their success is measured not only by their English development, but their academic achievement. So think of all the things that we want our L's to be able to do. It is a very heavy lift. So our job as teachers is to be there to support not only their academic achievement, but their English development. So here are a few things to consider. The, very, the most important thing when working with any students is to make sure that you build a strong relationship with them, get to know them, find out what interests that they have find out information about their family, be interested in the students that you have in your classroom. Whenever and in all situations possible, include your L's in all aspects of your lesson. Find out what they can do. When we talk about WIDA, the WIDA model is built on the can-do philosophy. When we are working with a student, we always wanna find out what they can do. Dismiss your assumptions. We all come to the table with our own unique perspectives and our assumptions may or may not be prevalent. What we must do is step back and say, are there any misconceptions or assumptions that I have when working with a student? That is in part keeping an open mind. And it also helps us to prevent from misreading their motivation. If you think about it, you're learning a language and you're learning content. You might look like you're not participating, but you might be exhausted. Maybe there's a, something that you don't know how to respond to. So the only way that they can is to look like they are not motivated or that they're not interested in the lesson. That might not be the case at all. So really spend some time getting to know your students and taking a look at what they can do and building upon that. When we do this, we plan daily opportunities for ELS to engage in speaking, listening, reading, and writing. We make the content accessible. We make sure that the age and grade level appropriate materials are used we simplify our language, our speech, and some of the visuals that we're using in order to make sure that they have access to the curriculum. We communicate and collaborate with the ESL teacher as often as possible. So when planning instruction, you should ask yourself some of these questions. What can my L's do? What might be challenging? What support or supports will give L's access to this content? If we take a look at this chart, these are the levels of English language proficiency. Across the top, you will see level one, which is entering, level two, emerging, level three, developing, level four, expanding, 
level five bridging, and level six reaching. Along the left-hand column are the four domains, listing, speaking, reading, and writing. When a student takes their WIDA access test, they are rated in all four categories. Those scores will give you indication of where they are on the continuum. When you get the composite score, it will give you your overall level for your L student. Please make sure that you spend some time if you have an, an ESL student in your classroom, that you are specifically looking at each of the following domains. As you start to see, once you work with a majority of Ls, they are in different ranges under each of the four domains. When we get into some back, more best practices, we look at activating background knowledge. Activating background knowledge is critical for their brain development. It's because it's easier to learn something that we already know when we attach it to something, learn something new when we attach it to something we already know. The prior knowledge is a critical step in the learning process, and it also helps with comprehension, not only in the comprehension in listening, but in reading, writing, and speaking. One of the things you want to consider is to adjust your language. Make sure when you're talking to with an L that's a lower level English learner, we want to make sure that we're using vocabulary that is not tricking them. We want to make sure that we take away our assumptions. We want to start with questions that allow them to connect to what you're showing them. Have you ever seen an amusement park? Instead of assuming, you know, when you ride a roller coaster, they might not have had that experience. Another great way is to use realia, pictures and objects that help represent concepts that they might not have prior knowledge to. You could also explicitly build by using those photos and images and helping connect them to language using sentence stems. You can get them started with sem sentence stems such as, this reminds me of, I know that, I think that. All those things help explicitly build the vocabulary and the skills you're about to teach. If you use a quick write, which is basically having students write down what they know, or a draw line and connect, which is connecting a picture to the vocabulary, make sure that you're helping the students get a better understanding of the topic. So if I were going to be teaching on, on fishing, there are specific content that have to do with fishing. If you're not a fisherman, you might not know those terms. You may not reuse them. Think of what it would be like for a, a student who is learning the English language. There is a ton of vocabulary that they do not know. So by using, bringing in a fishing rod, showing them what a hook looks like, bringing in actual tackle box is one way, or you could show them pictures. Remember, when we're building vocabulary, we're helping take all of those ideas and concepts and put them together. We're making, we're making the English language comprehensible. We're giving students access and equitable access to content. When we look at the three tiers of vocabulary, as you can see on the bottom, the tier one vocabulary, which is our everyday speech, makes up a large majority of the words that we'll use. Then we're gonna be getting into our general academic words that students need to be able to do. Those are our tier two words. When we get to the top, we're talking about our domain specific words. If we were to go back a slide and we're talking about fishing, these are our domain three words, they're specific to fishing. They're specific to the content that we're teaching. When you're planning for vocabulary, there are certain things that you can implicitly teach. On the fly, unplanned, they're teachable moments. However, best practice in vocabulary is to teach explicitly. That's systematic, direct, engaging, and is oriented towards making sure that students understand the concept concept. So make sure when you're explicitly teaching your, to your students that you're taking time to be systematic in your approach. Here's some ideas to get you started. You might have a lot of ideas you've used before, so feel free to use those as well. If you're starting with a word of the day, you're taking the word, you're showing them that word in context. Maybe it's a word they struggled with the day before, and you're going back and taking a look at that content and connecting that word by finding a synonym and antonym and making sure to connect it to the actual content that you're teaching. So take a look at that sentence again when you're having your students look at that vocabulary word. Make sure that the vocabulary term is in, term is in context. Here's just a simple primary example of how you could connect the word dog using the Freyer method. If you look, a dog is 
facts and characteristics using a sentence, example, and illustration. The Freyer model can continue with Jamboards. You could insert this in your Google Classroom and allow for a Jamboard for students to add their answers in either in groups, independently, or as a whole group activity. A Kim technique is one way that you can incorporate the keyword information and the memory clue or the picture. You could have the students start their mathematics lesson or any lesson with a word of the day or using a keyword and then have them tell information and then using a memory clue or picture. There are lots of vocabulary instructional ideas. All of them are linked to the slide deck. There are cognates that are important to help teach. There's tips for using word walls, roots and suffixes. And also when we think about it, our most important job is to scaffold the vocabulary. We're taking their everyday language, we're building upon that and make it more formal process and allowing them to access the academic vocabulary as well. That is making the content comprehensible for our L's. Here's an online resource that you can explore with your students called VisuWords. When you click on VisuWords, it will take you to their website. When you click explore, then you can type in the word that you want to explore. Let's say you want to evaluate. When you click the word evaluate, you will see all of the words that are connected to the word evaluate. It will tell you by using the key in the left-hand side, if it's a noun, a verb, adjective, or adverb. You could also see that there's other things that tell them, tell you to connect and extend. So if you hover over top of a word, let's say we talk about value, the quality. When you double click on that, it will expand the word out more, as you can see the other nouns that are related to that. You continue to hover over them, we'll go to worth. Double click. And as you can see, it will keep going and going. This is a great example to show your students how not only complex is the English language, but also how multifaceted it is, that words are connected in many different ways. So just to recap, remember, include and engage else as you would other students. Use the Weeded Candy descriptors to scaffold the instruction. Know that school may be the L's only opportunity to practice English. So be patient and practice because there is no magic bullet. And as you know, good things take time. So continue to work with your students every day and make sure that the, their curriculum is comprehensible. Here's a great activity that you can use in your classroom. It's called a close. You take information that you want to use and you leave a blank and allow students to create meaning. I'm going to challenge you now to take a look at this close and see if you can answer it yourself. Here we go. Make sure all your L's feel blank and blank in your classroom. There are lots of words that you could do. Engaged, make sure they feel connected. Safe as part of the classroom community. The next one, students who appear unmotivated are not lacking, but might be blank. So they're not lacking knowledge, they're not lacking motivation, but they might be tired. They might not be able to know how to apply what you're asking them to do. Some best practices for L's include explicitly teaching vocabulary, building background knowledge, scaffolding instruction, including L's, collaborating with your ESL teacher, which leads us to our last one. Always do your best to with other staff about your English language learners. So always do your best to communicate and collaborate with other staff. Thank you for joining us today for our best practices for L's. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me, follow me on Twitter. You can follow our monthly newsletter. You could also check out our YouTube channel where we have a posting of all of the topics that I have presented along with other slide decks for you to use. Thank you so much. And I hope you join us for another session soon.